from Wayne Gretzky to Bobby Orr, Gordy Howe, or even Sid the Kid, there's been a couple of absolute gems that shine above the rest, and today we're gonna put 20 of those gems on your finger. Or, uh, uh, at least in your mind, because you're gonna be thinking about it. But the question still remains, what are the rankings of some of the best players to ever touch the ice? You've seen him in the ads. You've seen him drinking that mini Stanley Cup in his car in front of his little boy. You've seen the man in action. His name is Martin Brodeur. And at number 20, Brodeur was a focal point for the New Jersey Devils stifling defensive style. He combined various goaltending techniques and was an outstanding puck handler. Even better than the flower today, Brodeur even scored three goals. Yeah, as a goaltender. Two of them came in the regular season and one of them was in the playoffs. He led the Devils to three Stanley Cups, and Broder is the all-time leader among goaltenders with 691 wins and 125 shutouts. You can't have this guy off the list. And, of course, we gotta have number 19 for number 19. But unfortunately, I ain't talking about Mr. Taves today. Steve Iserman. His name has become synonymous with leadership as he served the captain of the Detroit Red Wings from 1986 to 87 until his retirement after the 2005-2006 season. The 20 season stint as the captain of a team is the longest in NHL history. And despite his three Stanley Cups coming relatively late in his career, he also was remembered for winning. There is certainly no doubt about his numbers, 692 goals, 1,063 assists for 1,755 points in 22 seasons. As a center, he reached 50 goals five times and topped 100 points on six occasions. Tell me you can't have it at number 19. But one of the pure goal scorers of all time is my dad's favorite player, Mike Bossy. He only played 10 seasons because of bad luck, but Bossy still scored 573 goals, an average of 57 goals a year, and topped 50 goals 9 times. This guy was nearly on par with Gretzky, in fact he could have been even better than Gretzky had he never gotten hurt. And though the right winger did not necessarily shoot the puck harder than anybody else, he had a quick release and an uncanny accuracy in finding the openings presented by goaltenders. He was one of the biggest stars in the New York Islanders history when they won the four consecutive Stanley Cup from 1980 to 83, and he had pretty good line mates too, with center Brian Trottier and left wing Clark Gillies. At number 17, we got the first NHL star who was born in Europe. Have you guys ever heard of the song Stan by Eminem? Well, this guy probably took the name a little bit too literally. Stan Makita moved to St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada from what was then known as Czechoslovakia when he was about seven or eight. And Makita, a center, went on to lead the NHL in points not one, not two, not three, but four times, and is the only player in history to win the Art Ross Trophy as a scoring leader, the Hart Trophy as league MVP, and the Lady Bing Trophy, which goes to the most gentlemanly player in the same season. But it gets better. He did it twice, consecutively. How do you do that? He got them in 1966 and 67, and 1967 and 68. This guy knows how to play some hockey. He was also one of the first players to use a stick with a curved blade, and is one of the first to regularly wear a helmet. But number 16 is widely considered to be one of the most exciting players to ever grace an NHL hockey rink. The Montreal Canadiens of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s were sometimes referred to as the Flying Frenchmen, and none of them flew anywhere near the height of Guy Lafleur. This right winger, recognizable by his flowing blonde hair and his unfathomed puck control as he sped down the ice and was arguably the best player in the league from 1974 to 1980. In those six seasons, he won three scoring championships two Hart Trophies as league MVP, and a Smith Trophy as the Stanley Cup Playoffs Most Valuable Player. 
In these years, Lafleur averaged 55 goals, 73 assists, and 128 points as the Canadians won four straight Stanley Cups from 1976 to 1979. Number 15, though is a defenseman who struck the perfect balance between being the offensive defenseman and also an offensive brilliance. What do you mean by that? I mean Ray Bork, okay? But what did this guy do? He won five Norris trophies as the NHL's top defenseman in his 22 season career with the Boston Bruins and the Colorado Avalanche. He is the only defenseman in league history to reach 400 goals and Bork's 1,596 career points is the most by a rear guard as well. He was often a first or second team all-star in his first 17 seasons and was finally able to lift the Stanley Cup in his final year in 2001 with the Avs. How many Canadians do you know that play hockey? Well, I can't say as a Canadian that I know anybody who doesn't play hockey, or at least hasn't in their life. Honestly, this entire list could probably be made up of Canadians. But this next Canadian is Canadian twice, because he played on the Montreal Canadiens and his name is John Beliveau. Though Beliveau played most of his career in the 50s and 60s, this six foot three, 205 pound center would have probably fit perfectly in the game's modern era. His nickname was Le Gros Bill, which is Big Bill in French. The Canadians wanted Beliveau so badly that he was a teenager and they bet the entire Quebec Hockey League just to have rights to Beliveau. This man had 507 goals during his 20 season career, was a first time All-Star six times, Hart Trophy winner twice, and won 10 Stanley Cups as a player. Beliveau also won seven as a Montreal executive for the all-time record of 17. And one of his Montreal teammates is at number 13, Dog Harvey, the top defenseman of his era. Mr. Harvey won seven Norris trophies, and these go to the best defenseman of each season. He won seven times during the 50s and early 60s, and only Bobby Orr won more. Harvey controlled the game when the puck was on his stick, slowing or speeding the pace as the situation dictated. Harvey and Beliveau were only two components of the Montreal Canadiens' five consecutive Stanley Cups from 56 to 60. But number 12 is still active and remains as one of the NHL's greats at the age of 36. He also is known for his big red lips and crying tears. I'm just kidding, I actually love the guy. Sid the Kid has been one of the league's top players since he was an 18 year old rookie in 2005 and 6 being the first overall pick from the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Crosby as a centerman has certainly lived up to this hype with almost 600 goals and over 1500 points. He has two scoring titles, two Hart trophies as MVP, and three Stanley Cups, and even has two Conn Smythe trophies as he won the playoffs most valuable player twice. Crosby, the Penguins captain, is also an outstanding leader, and I really hope to see him as captain for Team Canada in 2026. And this brings us to number 11, which matches Marc Messier's uniform number. Messier is one of the greatest leagues in hockey history, and he has 694 goals, 1,887 points, and 6 Stanley Cups in a career that spanned 25 seasons. Messier guaranteed a New York Rangers win over the Devils during the 1994 playoffs, and then scored a hat-trick in that game to ensure the victory. The Rangers went on to win the 94 Stanley Cup run. Messier, also a center, won two Hart Trophies as league's most valuable player and a Smythe Trophy. Number 10 is the next goalie on our list. If you wanted to win a big game, particularly in the playoffs, Patrick Waugh was your guy in goal for your team 100% of the way, no question. Waugh is third all-time with 551 wins and four Stanley Cups, two with the Canadians and two with the Avs. He also won two Vesna trophies as the best goaltender and two Smythe trophies. 
Wasdolf's pucks at number 9 was the National Hockey League's first 500 goal scorer, Maurice the Rocket Richard. Richard played right wing, but he led the league in goals 5 times and was the first player to score 50 goals in one campaign. And it was in only a 50 game season. In 94-45, he won the Hart Trophy 8 times. His 544 goals stood as the all-time record until it was beaten by a man named Mr. Hockey in 1963. At number 8, we got Bobby Hall. Nicknamed the Golden Jet, and for power and for speed, he was calling his cards. But like a weightlifter or bodybuilder, at 5'10 and weighing 195 pounds, Hull was a left wing. He had the hardest slap shot, which made it even scarier, and by the severe curve of his stick's blade, he was the NHL's fastest skater. His 610 goals stood as the record for left wings until it was broken in 2002. Hull reached 50 goals five times, led the NHL in points three, and won the Hart Trophy as MVP. Nick Lidstrom, absolutely not a defenseman. In fact, he's quite the opposite. He was downright boring. But he always made the right play and rarely made a mistake in his 20-season career with the Red Wings. Lidstrom won seven Norris trophies as the league's top D-man, which ties him with Doug Harvey and again is only topped by Mr. Bobby Orr at eight. Lidstrom also won a Smythe Trophy in the playoffs and he helped the Red Wings win four Stanley Cups. At 6 for 3, 204, the big body wrestler with a great shot is here. Alex Ovechkin, delivering devastating hits to opponents almost as much as he does scoring goals. Ovechkin's got over 830 goals now and is second to only Gretzky's 894. Ovechkin, a right winger, has led the league in goals nine times and has also scored at least 50 nine times. The Washington Capitals' greatest player has also won two Hart Trophies and the Stanley Cup. Numbers five and four have had their careers shortened by injuries or illness, but the time they did spend in the NHL rinks were legendary. Number five is Mario Lemieux who despite playing 17 seasons, has only appeared in 915 games. But the big center, who is built like a tight end at 6'4", 230 pounds, still managed to get 690 goals and 1,723 points. He had 1.88 points per game, which is again only second to Gretzky. Lemieux overcame extreme back issues, Hodgkin's disease, and a three and a half season hiatus in the late 90s to win five scoring titles. Number four is number four. And of course, I'm talking about Bobby Orr. He only managed to play 657 NHL games, but those games changed hockey forever. Orr was the first defenseman to regularly attack offensively and a guy put up numbers that most forwards were not capable of coming close to. As an incredible skater, Orr surpassed 100 points in six consecutive seasons from 69 to 70 season and 1974 to 75. He won eight consecutive Norse trophies from 67 to 68 to 74 75. But unfortunately, Due to knee injury, he only played a total of 36 games over three seasons and was then finished at the age of 30. And while Orr changed the game and scoring possibilities for defensemen, number three is doing that right now. Although Connor McDavid has not yet managed to win the Stanley Cup in his nine seasons, the Edmonton Oilers superstar has managed to win just about everything else. With his blazing speed and his seemingly impossible maneuverability, his haul includes five Art Ross trophies as the NHL's point leader and two Hart trophies as the league's most valuable player. When his center collected 153 points during the 2022-23 season, McDavid became the first player since the 95-96 season to reach 150 points. And only Gretzky and Mario Lemieux have had a higher points per game average than McDavid's mark with just a little over one and a half points per contest. At number two, we have Gordie Howe, Mr. Hockey. 
While Gretzky was clearly the greatest offensive force that the game has ever known, Howe excelled in every facet of the game. From offense to defense, he was a right winger, but he would even drop back to play the defense a number of times throughout his career. He was physical, he was tough, and particularly durable. And at 6 feet tall, 205 pounds, Howe played 26 NHL seasons and 6 more in the World Hockey Association for an incredible 32 seasons of top tier pro hockey. He turned 52 years old during his final NHL season in 1979-1980. to He's third all-time in NHL history with 801 goals and he's fourth with 1,850 points and he's second in games with 1,767. If Howe's WHA totals were added, it would be 975 goals, 2,358 points and this in 2,186 games. Howe has won the Hart Trophy five times, the six Art Ross Trophies and four Stanley Cups. Wayne Gretzky simply obliterated the accepted statistical standards for offensive excellence in the NHL. Before Gretzky, there had been only one 150 point season in league history. But in the seven seasons from 80 to 81 and 86 to 87, Gretzky's lowest point total was 164. He topped 200 points four times and had 196 and 183 in the other two seasons in that span. In 1985-86, Gretzky had 163 assists. The center has also had a total of 92 goals, the single season record, 87, 73, and 72 in a single season. The fact that most clearly demonstrates Gretzky's offensive dominance in NHL history is that even if he had never scored a goal, the great one would still be the league's all-time points producer, just one of its 1,963 assists. And Yermer Yager is second all-time with 1,921 points. And that's just without the biggest goal total in NHL history, 894. Add to that 1,963 assists, and that comes to 2,857 points, almost 1,000 more than the second place Yager. Also, 9 Hart Trophies as MVP, 9 scoring titles, and 4 Stanley Cups. So there you have it. The top 20 greatest players in NHL history. Who's your favorite? And if he wasn't in our countdown, then who is it? Anyways, don't be a bender. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Help the algorithm. Help us grow. And see you next time.